Welcome back to Twin Flame Energy Podcast. I'm your host, AJ. And I am your co-host, Dominique. Right after she was just talking about me. Line. What? <laughs> All right. This is podcast number eight. And the title of today's podcast is Positive Energy. How do you keep it flowing in your relationship? So funny that's today's because we don't have any in the moment. So maybe we'll learn that's just something. because she be was she was being mean to me. She was talking about me. Said I had a big head. It was just accurate. <laughs> well, it's just my head's a little off shaped. But now it's not, it's not that big. First things first. <laughs> Last week. You couldn't think of an answer to the question during the pick a card, any card oh, segment. Oh, you're going to put me on the spot like that? So we're going to start there before we move on, okay? Why are you going to put me on Let, the spot? Let's all remember. What was the question? The question was, uh-huh. over the past month, what in you, what ways yeah. are you feeling unappreciated? Unappreciated. By moi. I feel like... Wait. <laughs> This is a tough one because I can answer again if you it said will you said cancel out your non-answer. <laughs> <laughs> then you're just gonna overshadow me. <laughs> you, okay, you said why in I feel the past months I feel I feel under unappreciated unappreciated by me by you. Um, I would say, I mean. I guess it's a little different for 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 us because you're not the typical where it's like the whole lovey lovey thing, and I'm like I say something and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, you're like, like, okay, but I still don't really really care about all of that lovey lovey stuff and how you feel about me. You didn't take out the trash, you know what I mean? I and think I say, I, I and that- I think I think that. And that, that is your love language. I get it. But mm-hmm. I think that in some cases, I'm like, I would like to, I would like to um, feel though that, that those, I mean, I would like to, you know, that you do care about those little things, I guess, sometimes, you mm-hmm. know, like when I, I, I go above and beyond to try to get you this or get you something or do something or cook something for you special or I don't know. And you'd be like, okay, mm-hmm, yeah. But then yeah. what is the point? No, I, I don't, I think your answer is garbage. I see, think that- see, this is the example right here. And I knew this was going to happen. So I just put her right into a trap and it worked. No, it's All right, trap, next What is the point of question. the love language if I have to next bullshit and question. pretend like what you got? Go- Listen, if my because love language. Because that is part of it. No, it's not. That is. No, Listen, not. positive energy in a relationship, how to keep it going. You have to bullshit sometimes. I got the I listen, I've you know got I'm the right. articles. I've got everything in front of me. Listen. So I've got all the tips. Listen. I don't think that they are gonna be all accurate. <laughs> Anyways, let's dive right in, people. Uh huh. And the, get the answers. Look, I was about to say something else. To everything Let me that not, we that's, need. This is a different podcast. So, (laughs) to reiterate, Uh, the topic, once again, is positive energy. How do you keep it flowing in your relationship? Pass that drink. As we share one Nas, because we are running low. Yep. I need to get some more. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, the very first article I have is actually... I'll just hold it over here. uh Uh-huh. Very first article I have is from HelloRelish.com. I'll repeat that. That's a food. Hello relish that's a food place and you know what i'm actually going to tell you a little something about relish it'll be our first non-sponsored dress rehearsal for future sponsored situations that we may come across okay what um i'll explain it to you mount olive uh called you <laughs> no <laughs> you said relish and then it's a sponsor listen i'll sponsor i cut up some uh mount olives the other day on the on the hot dog it was good Mind you, it was a vegan hot dog. Oh, people. yeah, absolutely. We don't do that. Actually, you'll get your answer to your question when I get to number nine. <laughs> it's like not at this time. <laughs> so, not at this time. nine ways to channel more positive 
energy into your relationship. Okay. This is from relish. Mm -hmm. Hello, relish.com. Number one, avoid unnecessary criticism. Now here's my question to you. What is necessary criticism? Necessary criticism. You mean you asking me a question? Yeah, I'm saying the first way it says is to avoid unnecessary like criticism. That. Okay. So what do you think is necessary? That's a very deep question. I like questions where you actually have to think. Mm -hmm. Because that's a validated question. Because some questions be just dumb questions. Well, I took some time and I went through all the articles today and I decided to flip the script on you. Mm, I like that. Challenge. Challenge. No, I mean, uh, uh, I guess a, 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 um, a question. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> what is a necessary, necessary criticism? criticism. Okay, necessary. Because they're saying to avoid the unnecessary criticisms. If, just to give you an idea. Like, want, like a criticism of, um, I guess, that person sounds bad when they sing is a unnecessary criticism that sounds necessary <laughs> as a as a singer would say yes um but i i want to say if if it isn't something that is see but that's that's the thing that's what makes it hard because to you you can't sit there and say like okay me saying this to you is bettering you mm -hmm. because what if they don't want better for themselves about that topic then you are taking yourself to a place where why are you even this in this relationship? So I don't think anybody will give a criticism mm -hmm. that is for someone's self betterment in a relationship, and mm -hmm. that person doesn't want better for themselves. So when you hit that point, so, you're kind of at the end of your relationship, right? And that's and we're, and and if well, I was actually looking at it on the lines of just a friend, but as far as this in is a, a rela relationship podcast, buddy. Clearly, but I'm, what I'm saying is, is that when you think about it, there has to be a collective understanding, mm -hmm. right, of what both goals are. So the criticism only that addresses the collective triangle. Mm -hmm. The triangle is, it works good for me, it works good for you, and at the top, it works good for both of us. Mm -hmm. That's the triangle. So if you look at that triangle and you're like, okay, what you're doing right now is not good for this triangle. Mm -hmm. It's hurting you because you said it. you don't want to be that person. It's hurting me because I don't like to see that. And then it's also hurting our entire relationship and unit. That's good criticism, I think. What I'll also say is this. If I'm criticizing the way you chew, that's unnecessary criticism. Yes, However, that's what I, exactly what I mean. If I say, you know... The way you spend money puts us in a position where we're unable to pay our bills mm -hmm. and grocery shop mm -hmm. by week four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a necessary criticism because at yes. this point you are yes. messing with my livelihood and the livelihood of our home. Right, right. So I How think you prioritize money is not so good for the triangle. I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. So good. that would be considered necessary because... Mm -hmm you're messing with my life versus if you, you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think it really depends on if it starts to mess the way, how you feel about your life, right. how yeah. you feel about, let's take someone who drinks a lot. For example, like, Oh, I'm, I want to stop drinking. Okay. We had that conversation. Then they go back to drinking. <laughs> okay. Brother, what you doing? Mm -hmm. You're drinking. Chill out. Yeah. Like this is not good for you. You said it. It's not good for me. Cause I don't want it. You know what I mean? Right. So I guess if it works for the triangle in terms of the criticism, then that that's a good validated criticism. Right. That's pretty good. All right. So number two, compliment your partner. And I wrote next to it as the question, what types or ways do you like to be complimented the most? Me? Hmm? Can I have the drink, please? Why? You always got me going first. Because I do all the reading. <laughs> Would you like to switch? Nope. All right. Um, compliment it. I mean, I guess I would say when, I don't know, like you had me being Bob the Builder all the time. And when I fix something, you know, 
I guess that that's nice. Or, you know what? This is a good one. This is a good one. And I think I'm saying this for a lot of creatives out there. Mm -hmm. Not just me. Probably you as well. Um, to to, to, to um, give a compliment on my music. Mm -hmm. Ain't that like... It, it sounds like it's like, but what are you talking about? That's what you do. You know what I mean? You are music. Blah, 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 blah. You are a singer. Why would I compliment you on what you do? And it's like, people don't think about it. And then you're like, that's why the self-consciousness mm -hmm. of someone who is a creative feels that way. Because they don't get enough positive feedback on what they do. What if they suck? I'm just fine. I mean, I'm just trying to be devil's advocate. I mean, you know, that's just that's that's a whole nother conversation. I mean, but I you get what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like people are just like, oh, that's that's nice. You did another song. Good. But actually really listening to it and be like, man, that's you know what I mean? And I think that I appreciate what you do. Yeah. I, I, I really see that you took time into this or a thought out, um, you know, thing on that would be really good. Mm hmm. I, I, I believe. And I think a lot of creatives need more of that because I think the expectation of, you know, Picasso. Oh, yeah. He just did another painting. Yep. Well, I mean, like Picasso reference. <laughs> I'm just saying you got what I'm saying. It's like yeah. you think about certain things. That's why a lot of these creatives end up being in a situation where they don't feel they don't feel um, like they, they, are, they are worth anything. They feel like like hopeless they're like, why did this creative person and this comedian off themselves? Well, I mean, because they didn't feel that. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying it goes deeper than just saying, oh, I like the way you sing. It goes deeper than that. So I'm just saying I'm trying to pull the, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That card of being a little deeper than, than most. But, you know, that's how we think. I get what you're saying. Yeah. I personally don't resonate with this question because I don't like compliments. I'm, I'm weird. I don't know compliments make me uncomfortable mm -hmm. i know that's clearly a self thing that's part of what that's I why I, I spend a lot of time just hiding stuff because i just don't like i just like just don't listen, see me listen you don't come from a musical family <laughs> so it's an expectation that you are good so you're not going to hear it and then when you do get it you're like i'm just doing a song okay no. get in my face no. but it's like and i just don't know if i'm interested i, I don't know if i care but like I said, that's it's, a self thing. It's part of it. Yeah. It's a self thing. Yeah. Yeah. But number three. Mm -hmm. Reminisce about the past. Now, I found this one strange and I was going to ask you, would mm -hmm. this work for you? Basically, they're saying if you're going through a rough patch, mm -hmm. reminisce about better times. I don't personally think this works for me. <laughs> would this work for you? Reminiscing on better times just pisses me off. Why? Like, what did we do to why? not be there anymore? A answer me this. Why? I don't want to answer that. Okay. You answer. Well, would it work for you? She get she she's allowed to say I ain't allowed. I'm, I don't okay. want to answer nothing. No, no. I'll no. answer it. No, it's okay. No, I, I'll answer. I, let me answer the question. Okay. I'm gonna answer the question. Um, I think I I do, I do like it. Um, but I also like too that it just shows you know, um when we had less or when we weren't where we are now or when, you know, how we still had good energy or fun times, good times. So it just feels good sometimes to reminisce on those little things. Mm -hmm. I think, I think it's, it's, it's good. Cool. Number four, be realistic. So the honeymoon phase will wear off, but having realistic expectations for your relationship you and your partner well for your partner and even for yourself will help mm -hmm. you to channel positive energy into your relationship mm -hmm. thoughts be realistic mm -hmm. i mean yeah i, I mean I, i'm with it <laughs> i agree simply as that yeah number five focus on gratitudes and i wrote next to it do you have trouble with gratitude me mm -hmm. no I don't think I do at all. How do you see gratitude or in your own space? 
I mean, sometimes I appreciate the little, like, tiniest little inkling of anything. Mm -hmm. And then I hold on to things so, so deep or so hard because somebody worked their butt off to, I mean, little every little thing to me, I, I just feel so, um, you know what I mean, appreciative of, of and I just, you know, I, I just, I guess that's just how I am, I guess, mm -hmm. you know. What about you? Oh, I, we're aware. I, I have to be lots of trouble with gratitude. Mm -hmm. Like people be like, that whole long thing that people have to do. You woke up this morning. You've got air in your lungs. I don't find just being alive You're and like, breathing so? to be enough to be grateful. Because if that's so? all I have, then we can just move on to the next like, cycle. <laughs> that's what this vessel is made for. Yeah. Why would I just that's, be? That's called baseline. <laughs> like I, I personally need more than just Listen. that. My thing is this, though. I look, I understand. I understand both perspectives, your perspectives. And I understand appreciating the breath. I do. I understand both. Mm -hmm. So I get it. However, I will say within the past six months, I've had my first at thirty five and three point thirty five point nine five years old. Like that's many I numbers. finally <laughs> have had my first few experiences mm -hmm. with what gratitude could possibly look like. Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's that's small. Look, I think breakthroughs are never actually breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. I think the small, little small breakthroughs are the ones that actually last. I agree. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So every time there's a little moment, another little moment, another little moment, I think those um, is really what matters mm -hmm. that makes actual self change exactly self-realization there you go number six ask for what you want don't expect your partner to be a mind reader and i put in parentheses next to it Beam. the fairy tale fantasy i made this one makes me angry because mm -hmm. i feel like we truthfully specifically women in particular mm -hmm. have been duped mm-hmm just by the mindset that like they're okay there's this thing of surprises which i i hate surprises yeah she does but um it may be because nobody look no shade but i've never been surprised <sighs> on the level of what i'm sorry if i if i woke up in the morning and someone said get up get dressed put a blindfold on Bora me Bora. i ended up on a plane and i ended up in the maldives mm -hmm. i think i might fall in love with with surprises but clearly <laughs> i already knew that however because i just said it <laughs> a piece of cake is not a surprise to me so therefore it ain't that it's not <laughs> listen no no I, I, that's, that's part of the gratitude and no you've never done that I'm, that was an example i know yeah. <laughs> but i was just make saying, that clear because no yeah. I, I got know. a piece of cake for you Come and eat it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like this week, I like cake, but um, uh, she made me a beautiful cake, guys. And yes, it was yesterday was his phenomenal. Jesus, it was birthday. It was my birthday yesterday, but the cake and oh my god, the enchiladas she made. Woo! Hashtag three three. Like those enchiladas were amazing. They were so good. So, just wanted Moving to point that right out. Along. And I, I see that's what I look. I appreciate all of that. Moving right along. You got some more, right? You got two enchiladas in the fridge. Oh, right now. <laughs> um, the point I'm trying to make <laughs> is the fairy tale syndrome is that we think that if a guy is not reading your mail, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it's not you're not in a romantic space yes. or whatever. Yes. And my yes. thing is yes. we have to start normalizing the idea of being heard f making you feel romantic That's right. at the same time. That's and right. I think that's why a lot of guys don't listen because they're not getting any props for listening. There you go. You just said a whole mouthful all together. You just said a whole bunch. And that's kind of goes to what you were saying, the question on the card that I didn't answer. Mm -hmm. That goes to all of that. Yeah. It's the little props for the little things sometimes you, that, that that changes the whole mindset of a, a man. It's funny you you're know. talking about the little things and it's like going through even to what I, the reading and you'll see that later. Oh, wow. See, and it's, it, it, yeah, everything you just said was, was, was great. Cause I will say earlier on in our relationship, sometimes I would ask, I'm like, why, 
why is it that sometimes you feel as though I can I need to read your mind? Mm -hmm. Remember I said I've said that a few times. This was earlier in our relationship. And it got to the point to where we were able to more or less communicate more or at least try to. Because it's still I mean, it's still hard. It's gonna be hard for a while, but we are at least knowing and fully aware where we're going, so we still know the cards that we need to play. Mm -hmm. So well, number seven, mm -hmm. look to increase your emotional connection. And the examples basically is um, increasing multiple, blah, blah, blah. increasing your emotional connection can mean a lot of different things from spending quality time together to picking hobbies as a couple to date nights to emotional check-ins with a therapist. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just like... Villa. You know, you have a quiet moment where your brain just goes click. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's go down to number eight, which is self-care. Even know. if you are in a relationship, it's important to prioritize your self-care and self-improvement. So the question I have for you, how mm -hmm. do you self-care? Self-care. I'm, that's actually something I've been working on. I've, 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 I've not for years. I mean, years. And I had to go get in my thirties to really start realizing how important it is for self-care. Self-care is sometimes as simple as acknowledging what you want at a certain moment, you know? And if you're making that decision because you want that, or because you think somebody else wants that that's around you because yeah. you become what everyone else wants and that's surrounding you and you don't become who and what you want now do you think you not having any self-care for let's say the first eight years of our relationship mm -hmm. how do you think that affected our relationship um i think that it 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 it, it was it made it it, it made our relationship confusing Mm -hmm. For you, I believe. Okay. I believe me not knowing and understand will make it confusing because it's like, who who doesn't care about self? Who doesn't like love self? Who doesn't like? It's kind of like, you know what I mean. So the simple things that you think that everyone would do for themselves, like because they just love themselves or they actually feel good about themselves, when someone doesn't. It, it makes everything complicated. So I think that me having that issue, you know, my whole life, it, it's, it's complicated a lot of things in my life. And the biggest would be my relationship. But the fact that she's still here <laughs> <laughs> means that things are working or at least I'm understood by her. And that's what matters. She understands what I feel or what I what I've gone through or what I've whatever, you know what I mean? Uh huh. I'll say that self care is an action. So when you don't have that action, mm -hmm. you're disconnected from a couple of things. First off, it's hard for you to know how to love someone else if you can't love yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have self love, then you're really truly not tapping into the potential of loving your spouse or your significant other mm -hmm. secondarily mm -hmm. it's hard to even set an example for like our kids in terms of how to take care of ourselves for them to see how to take care of themselves mm -hmm. i have always felt that strongly so i feel like anytime right. you see something in your kids that you don't like or that's negative and it like can be connected to like their self-esteem, self-care, mm -hmm. how they treat their things, how they treat themselves, how they treat others. I think it can all be brought back to something that us as parents are struggling with in terms of self-care, self-love, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Right. Right. Very true. So you asked for a number nine. I did. You want to know about relish. Right? <laughs> this is not sponsored. We're a brand new podcast. <clears throat> we hope to grow one day and one day be 
sponsored by multiple, multiple different wonderful companies that align mm -hmm. with our energy and our mission. But for this free, non-sponsored, sponsor spoke, speak. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is all coming from the cuff, okay? Mm -hmm. Relish, okay, is a relationship coaching app that can help you and your partner identify and set and achieve relationship goals. Mm. So what I thought would be cool is mm. that me and you are going to check out this app over the next seven days and report back with our thoughts next week. I ain't got no space on my phone. We're, we'll make space. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're interested in Relish, go mm. ahead and go download the relationship coaching app to help you with all of your relationship coping, coaching needs. Got you. All right. That's so that was lucky number nine of the nine ways to channel more positivity into your relationship from HelloRelish.com. Relish. Yes. My favorite thing that must be on a hot dog or a veggie dog or whatever happened. Sometimes you don't want relish. Anyways. <laughs> All right. So. What we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break and we will be back in a moment.
All right, we are back from the break. That was Ignite Me Again, per usual. Vapors, available everywhere where you stream your music. Yeah, buddy. That is nice. That is really nice. But right now, it is time for the book of the month. And this book, again, is The 80-80 Marriage, a new model for a happier, stronger relationship by Nate and Kaylee Klimp. <laughs> This week's assignment is the second half of part two, cultivating a new mindset, and that is chapters six and seven. Yes. So just to kind of get into a couple of pieces of these chapters here, um, chapter six in particular was called Appreciation, What You See. And that is, let me see here. That was number two of the three elements of mindset. Mm -hmm. Just to reiterate, the first one was contributing, right. and the second one is now appreciation. So, the power of mindset. It sounds subtle, but what you choose to see in your marriage colors your experience of your life together. It has the power to turn every waking moment into relentless streams of reasons to feel anger, resentment, resentment and disappointment. But it also has the power to turn every moment into an opportunity to see a unique strengths, insights, and contributions of your partner. This is the second element of radical generosity mindset. What you see. It's what happens when we push beyond our ordinary way of seeing our partner. When we see them from the perspective of radical generosity, it's practicing appreciation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Kind of goes along with one of those topics on the articles, too. Yeah, it does. Yep. They said, hap they said happy couples see things differently. There's a habit of mind. There's a habit of mind mm -hmm. that. Why am I having trouble reading this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's because your line underlines is in the way. <laughs> she got so many notes. Listen, OK, it's a great book. Though. Try again. There is a habit of mind. Mm -hmm. That the matters. Okay, this is a typo, yo. <laughs> There's a <laughs> habit of mind that the masters have. Bing! Uh -huh. Not a typo. I'm just. Okay. 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 There's a habit of mind that the masters have, mm -hmm. which is this. They are scanning the social environment for things they can appreciate and say, I th thank you for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So unhappy couples, <laughs> by contrast, see their partners differently. They're not looking for things to appreciate in each other. They're scanning each moment to catch their partner's screw ups. And they're negative. Yep. So yep. if you think about it that way, what I thought was really cool is they went Why into. Why she always? Why he always? Well, yeah. it's innate because the thing about it is you're always looking for what needs to be done. You know what I'm saying? But it's how you. Yes and okay. no. And how you approach it. Okay. Well, here's the, here it here it is. If if you're like something needs to be cleaned, or like if you walk in the house and there's like something in the corner, mm -hmm. like some trash or something, mm -hmm. and you're like, I just got home. This person has been home all day. Mm -hmm. Why has nobody Why seen is this it? trash? Yeah. You may decide, I'll just pick it up. You know, the the, 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 uh, the 80 80 mindset is, let me get this up because this is for the betterment of our home. That's the 80 I mindset. I don't agree with that. How, that's the 80 80 mindset, no, man. No, that particular part. However, what our normal is, is to go into, you know what? Let's see what happens. Let's see how long it's going to take them to clean this up. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you just watch it and then you go through the rest of the day and then mm -hmm. you want to, like, lash out. Like, you know what? This trash been in this corner all this time. <laughs> You've been here all day. What is trash? Like, well, that's just kind of like innate. <laughs> but, but put it this way, this way. Then what? What I think should happen is is put yourself in a different perspective. They've been here all day, but you what don't was know going what on? they. Yeah, you don't know what they were going through. We don't know what they were doing. You don't know how many, like how much stuff they were getting done. You know what I mean? They they fixed a whole, you know, I don't know, wall in the back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Listen. But I think that going into, you know what going talking to that person saying you know what i really appreciate that you fixed everything and all that stuff in there i really appreciate it i noticed that there was trash in the corner you might have not gotten to it yet or listen and then <laughs> and then then you will get 
their response. But because it was approached that way, I think that will change lives. You know what it takes to respond like that? Mm -hmm. Self-control of your own emotions. Yes, that's it. because when you come in and you see the trash, don't jump. Just take a breath. That's, that's, yes. Take Learning how to breathe and being able to control your own emotion, emotions is the only way that's going to happen. Breathing saves lives. Because it all sounds nice, but if you go with the emotional yeah, responses, it's, that will it's never easier happen. easier said than done. Because you like you go like there's a whole like <laughs> food on on the ground. <laughs> like <laughs> what is this? You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. What's cool is at this point they got a little bit of sciency in the book, so I'm gonna get a little sciency I on you for science. just a moment. That's my thing. Um, they're talking about the prehistoric threats of appreciation, and mm -hmm. I thought this was really cool because it went into mm -hmm. kind of like the history of why we think the way we think as people. Mm -hmm. So they were talking about the fact that, you know, before when we used to hunt for our food, um, well, let me read it how it says here. Mm -hmm. It says back when we were, basically when we were hunting our food, the paradox of being a human being in our modern age has kind of changed things for us. Mm -hmm. So we are still in our brains wired for the prehistoric days of where we used to hunt our food. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, no, so because we are wired in that way, mm -hmm. we see things, things that have nothing to do with actually threatening, like whether or not we will live or die. Mm -hmm. We see them in that way. And so we respond to them in, that, in them in that way. Okay. It says here, nobody has ever died because of the collapse of a living room blanket fort. What is that? I have no idea, but we're going to keep it moving. It's not like a guitar. Phone? It sounds like a guitar. No, my phone's on vibrate. It, or maybe Ellie's phone. Oh, okay. Our daughter's phone is sitting right here. That's probably what that <laughs> I was, was so confused. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, like I said, no one's ever died because of the collapse of a living room blanket fort. Mm -hmm. Our body's response to these kind of domestic threats mm -hmm. with a similar flood of stress hormones which isn't just bad for our marriages. Mm -hmm. It's also the key cause to stress-related health conditions such as diabetes, anxiety, depression, and cognitive degeneration. So pretty much regular crap is happening in our lives. Mm -hmm. It can be, oh, this man did not do the dishes. Oh, yeah. she didn't clean this yeah. bathroom. We see it in our brain because our brain is wired to when we were hunting for food mm -hmm. and seeing things are life or death. We respond to these things in our bodies yeah. with life or death emotions. Yeah. However, the things we're mad about aren't life or death issues. That's real deep. Yeah. That's extremely deep because this day and age, it's like the way humans live life now is like people would look at us and back in the day, day, pre-story like, day. Oh my God. Like, what do you mean you don't have to go find your food? Like, what? what? You eat three meals a day? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Like, y'all, y'all care about this stuff? You know? Yeah. So, but we still have that fight or flight mm -hmm. response, but also too, take it a little bit further. Here we go being deep again. You know, what, what type of chemical does that create in your brain when you react a certain way? Stress hormones. Small at a time, mm -hmm. bit by bit by bit. It's like that, a drug. That chemical that, that is produced in your brain, like you said, it leads to other diseases and causes and issues and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, they die with a heart attack because they have so much stress. Stress is the leading killer of everything on the planet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. It's like, wow. Take a deep breath. You could reduce, like, a lot. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's deep. It says, appreciation is a response. It's how we make music in marriage. Mm. When one partner makes the bed, takes care of a sick child, yeah. or goes out of their way for the other, appreciation is seeing and acknowledging those contributions. It's saying to your partner, I see you. I see how generous you are. Yeah. I see how much you're trying, mm -hmm. and I value how much you care. Deep. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. That's deep. So this part in particular that I'm about to read here is the part I was reading when I was having that, that come to Jesus moment that morning, and I yeah, called my mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> and then my mom ordered the book. Like it was just like, oh, I said no. This is better than any Sunday morning church service. I'm just sorry. Okay. All right. I need some so, theme music for this. <clears throat> excuse me. Let me get ready. <laughs> so, the more we talked to couples, the more we noticed a pattern: appreciation and criticism work like deposits and withdrawals from a bank account. Thanking your partner for planning a trip. That's a deposit in the emotional bank. Mm. Appreciating your partner in front of your family for cooking an amazing meal. That's more money in the bank. Mm. Telling your partner that the way they eat is annoying. That's a small withdrawal. Suggesting your partner hit the gym a few more times each week to slim down their dad bod. That's another withdrawal. Mm -hmm. Insulting your partner's intelligence in front of friends at a dinner party. That's the kind of withdrawal that brings you close to a zero balance. The point is that appreciation and criticism work either to build or destroy your relationship's net worth. If you live with a mindset of criticism, indifference, contempt, and contempt, the data says that you'll likely become relationally destitute. (laughs) But whether you're financially rich or poor, if you can build the habit of seeing your marriage through the lens of appreciation, you become relationally rich. And over time, the surplus in your account grows so large Mm. that when tough times come, and they always do, your relationship surplus will give you the cushion to fall back on. That is the power of appreciation. And with that, I drop the mic. Don't my mic. But yeah, but yeah, that's it. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Can you get the? That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Um. <laughs> I'm sorry. That. But no, that, that right there. Yeah. That's listen. Deep. That's I'm, extremely deep. So good. Yeah, and you know, look, take it even further. Build your credit. Of your relationship. Yes. Build the equity of your relationship. Now, even if you think about that, the more you build, the more credit you have on your other spouse. Yeah. Because of how much you... Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like, it's deep. Yeah. That is... That is awesome. Like, seriously. We can end the podcast now. (laughs) Well, we read two chapters, so I got to get a little bit into ch- the last one that we are looking into here. Chapter seven mm-hmm. is the third part of changing your mindset, which is revealing what mm-hmm. you say. Um, one of the things that they talked about I thought was awesome and actually marked another book that we will put on this podcast at one point in time by a couple named Mark and Jill. I don't know if their last names are in the book. But there's a couple named Mark and Jill. They wrote a book called No More Perfect Marriages. And I have put it in the cart. We will add that at some point in time a few months down the road. Maybe February. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's our anniversary month. But one thing they talked about was something called slow fades. Okay. So slow fades is a phrase for small ruptures in connection that gather over years or even decades. Mm -hmm. Because it comes off of the fact that. Uh, Mark and Jill, they were married for a long time. No big issues. All of a sudden, Mark had an affair. And it kind of really destroyed the relationship. He was about to move out, get with this other lady. Jill was in a point of just having, just being emotionally just distraught. And then after that, they decided they wanted to work it out. So they began therapy and all this different stuff. And they were just trying to find out why. Why did this man cheat? Mm -hmm. And they could never find the reason. Mm Mm-hmm. Then at some point in time, they found out there were a million micro mini reasons, Mm. times where he may have felt unappreciated, Mm. all these different things. And so they started to, so they coined this phrase, slow fades, Mm -hmm. because it's the teeny weeny things things. that go without being addressed. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, you know what I mean? That's big. It's it's really big. And it's funny because. They put everything into two categories. They call them potholes and sinkholes of marriage. Okay. Wow. So. That's that's deep. Yeah. Let me see. Because it's always, once again, it's about the little things. Yes. The practice of revealing is the way of being radically generous by revealing even the most seemingly insignificant fears hurt feelings or disappointments. So this chapter was really about 
we've been talking about the 80 80 you know relationship all this time and it seems like it's always about give 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 mm-hmm. i felt like in this chapter they kind of came to the person you know almost came to like well what about if i'm giving and i feel like the other person isn't giving mm-hmm. and it's like okay how do you just be like look you have to tell them how you're feeling mm-hmm. so revealing is being able to just sit them down and tell them look this is how i feel this is where you're hurting me and this is where i'm disappointed basically mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and just how to say it how to say it yeah yes like this yeah. is something that i want to find out if you agree about this a sociologist <laughs> and marriage <laughs> researcher daniel l carson mm-hmm. said communication is the key to equal marriage and shared responsibility it says this for men in particular Strong communication leads to a greater willingness to share household work, which in turn leads to greater marriage satisfaction and even better, more frequent sex. Okay. What's the, what's the, the, um, Do you agree the perspective? With that? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get what, say it again, but like, okay. are you saying once again, the men for men, Men. Strong communication uh-huh. leads to a greater willingness to share in household work, mm-hmm. which in turn leads to a gr- to greater marriage satisfaction mm-hmm. and even better, more frequent sex. Right. So, uh, me communicating with you, Basically, or you communicating being, with me, being in a marriage that has great communication just in general mm-hmm. okay is communication okay. the key Helps is what they're the saying yeah, they're saying yeah, yeah, is, yeah. Commu- is greater communication the key yeah yeah i do agree with that okay i do agree with that okay i because what, what i was what, what i would say is is with men a lot of men it's the lack of communication mm-hmm. you know what i mean um you know those men some men are too vocal some men but they're not really still, they're still not communicating. Mm-hmm. They could be very vocal and still not communicate what the issue is. Right. You know what I mean? So communication, true communication, I think, yeah, absolutely, is vital. And, like, I, you know, I even have that issue not knowing how to communicate properly. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, it's that's big. So here's something that is interesting. It's a... Um Kind of like a practice they have little practices inside of the book so this is the practice called the reveal and request i put on here would this help us question mark mm-hmm. it says when issues come up in marriage we recommend the simple time efficient tool for resolving conflicts called reveal and request mm-hmm. here's how it works mm-hmm. step one mm-hmm. notice when you're you and your partner are out of sync here's how you know this is happening mm-hmm. you feel resentful towards your partner um, you're thinking things aren't fair. You're cycling in your mind through past injustices committed by your partner. You pick fights with your partner over something mean- meaningless. You blame your partner for something that's out of their control, has like raining during a vacation. Mm-hmm. Simply becoming aware of falling out of sync is mo- is a monumental accomplishment. It gives you the ability to choose what to do next, to pretend the issue doesn't exist, which is not recommended, or reveal is so that you can get back into a connection so revealing the issue Mm -hmm. this is what i was asking when i said does this work for us okay share your emotional experience so if there's something wrong Mm -hmm. or something that's bothering me Mm -hmm. and i come and i say i feel and i started with one of these four i feel sad when i feel angry when Mm -hmm. it hurts my feelings when Mm -hmm. or i feel unappreciated when this is just about revealing your inner experiences um keeping you from feeling connected so i thought it was interesting i thought it was instead of being like you know what i'm so sick of you doing this and blah 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 blah, blah, blah you come right. at it with one of those oh, yeah. and you f- start off by sharing how you were feeling it's and then how, you yeah. follow that with your request right. so you tell your partner what he or she can do to get back in connection with you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. It says, my ask is that you show up on time next week. It's important to me that you follow through the next time you say you've got something handled. Mm-hmm. Please don't call me by that name anymore. Oh, that's hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> call you Mildred? <laughs> Gertrude. Listen. <laughs> so it says, here's what it looks like when you combine the two together. So, I feel sad that you never thanked me for the work I did to finish our taxes. That's the reveal. Right. 
Next time I complete a big project for us, it's important to me that you say thanks. That's the request. Mm. Or here's another one. I know you were joking, but it really hurt my feelings when you called me an idiot at dinner the other night. Damn. That's the reveal. Can you please mm. not call me that again? That's the request. Mm -hmm. This is the last one. I feel angry when you turn away from me after sex. That's the reveal. Can you hold me for a few moments before? <laughs> I don't know why I make that voice. <laughs> I the voice. You're belittling someone else's feelings. <laughs> they want to be held. I'm just so not a. When you deny uh, the booty, hold me, please. <laughs> It just sounded so mushy. It was like, hold me. No, you sounded mushy. That's because that's how it sounded in my head. It sounded real. Oh, man. Just like. Yeah. If you don't take it. it no. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Can you hold me for a few moments before we go to sleep? That's the request. So, I think this is really good. And I think. <laughs> that's yeah. the last one. Yeah. But uh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I feel like the way that they put the reveal and request together. Right. Can be very helpful. Right. It's, 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 it's creating a structured dialect yes. to get through an emotional feeling yes a structured dialect to get through like an emotional feeling that you're having you know when it's a problem in your relationship yes and i just want to reiterate really fast this is the last when thing when you call me names it <laughs> makes me feel bad sad angry okay well just now my question is this <laughs> To be to be the devil's advocate, like, what if that other person doesn't agree with your request? Do they answer that? Oh, dang, you're gonna make me start looking around because mm -hmm. I didn't read everything. Um, that's that's it's not, I'm not it's not for me per se, but I'm oh, just please. I'm it's just definitely for you. It ain't for me. It's, it's it for is you. one billion percent it's for, for you. you. <laughs> Because to, to, to ask you to stop name calling me is like, nope. <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm kidding because I don't, that don't really bother me. I don't name call you like that. Or so you say. Dang it. Now you're going to make me. Because I know there's something in here that. Look, I... how about look, let's table it, write it down. Let's address it on the next one to see if there is. Let's see if there is something. Because I know there is. And that's okay. What's... Okay. Is it? That's good. That's good. So yeah, then we can probably come back to it. looking for it. Like we came back to my question. So let's do that. Oh, I got it right here. Oh, wow. I found it. Wow. Okay. So this podcast <laughs> may be an hour and 20 minutes because we're at 52 minutes and I'm really trying to get through the end of this. So this uh, is the last thing. Last fine. two things I'm going to say. That's fine. So to answer your question, mm -hmm. it's the first response. Okay. Let me see here. So, okay, here we go. Acknowledge your partner's experience. It says something like, wow, I can, okay, this is how you acknowledge your partner's experience. Mm -hmm. Wow, I can totally see how that would upset you. Mm -hmm. When it comes to your partner's request, your job is to be the listener and is to respond with a kind and honest answer, which might sound like, yes, I can do a better job of that next time. Or mm -hmm. might in some cases sound like, no, I want to help here, but I can't commit to that. Mm. So then where do you go from there? We'll just have to keep reading the book. Cause that it goes, it's a, it's a, it's a loophole. However, it listen, will go on forever. I'm, I'm sorry. I have to read this because I said where we currently are. Dot, dot, dot. What? It says the second more problematic response is driven by fear, mm -hmm. anger, and frustration. It sounds something like, are you kidding me? If anyone's frustrated, it should be me right now. <laughs> you mean that's what you No, are. that's where, what you do. If anyone should what? be pissed off right now, it's me. That's what it says. This is all what? you What? No, I don't. This I don't is the kind that. of response that is a bad idea for so many reasons. It's not affirming. It's an attack. You have also signaled your partner that it's not safe to be emotionally vulnerable with you and that they're better off withholding their true feelings. Uh, I think it is us, not just you or me. I think we are both here. Because I was like, I, I said where we currently are. Okay. I, I will give you that because I both feel that way a lot. And it comes out your mouth. 
I don't think I said that way. No. <laughs> Just because you use different words. Yeah, I don't think it's I said exactly that way. the same. But okay. But just to end off this chapter six reveal, the two <laughs> things that I wanted to make sure we had clarity with is sinkholes versus mm-hmm. potholes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so potholes are low grade sources of friction in relationship that annoy that are annoying but tolerable. So those little things that keep happening, and that's kind of what happened with Jill and Mark and how he ended up cheating. They were potholes. Right. Little potholes, you know. You hit the same pothole every day. One day your wheel is going to come off. We've been there. Versus, you mean actual wheels? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I'm talking about wheels, for real. Versus sinkholes, Uh which are issues that have become so explosive over time that they trigger an immediate surge of anger, Mm -hmm. irration, uh, uh, irritation, excuse Mm -hmm. me, fear, and the association of, associated cocktail of stress hormones right so we do have a couple of those but i think they are potholes that were never addressed that have become sinkholes versus them actually being sinkholes you know Mm, what i mean yes yes yes, so that is it for our recap on the book of the month all right just going into next week we will be reading chapters where are we at? The next ones. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, just re- ones. real fast. We're actually going to be starting part three, which is building a new structure. We're going to be starting with chapter eight and nine, and we'll be going from there. Alrighty. Let's see where I am at here. I've just. All right, so. What we're going to do is, let's do pick a card, any card. All right. Now, remember, we were, we were looking at the, we were looking at the, um, what is it called again? (laughs) Give me the, give me the, let me look at it. It's the intimacy deck. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus, like I dropped something. I dropped something. All right. So once again, like I said, <laughs> all my papers just fell off. And so now I am um, flying off the handle. So time for pick a card, any card. Once again, we are picking from the best self intimacy deck. And we're going to recap those categories real quick. It is about you, intimacy, relationships, past, life, random, Mm-hmm. And so we are about to pick a card now. Do you, last time I chose, which one do you want to choose? I don't remember. About you, <laughs> intimacy, <laughs> relationship, past, life, or random. Which which one do you want? Let's do random. I don't think we we haven't done random. Have we, we have not done random. And if you can give me a code, that'd be great. Let me see what color random is. Random is yellow. These cars are color coordinate, color coded. So yeah. So going under random. Pick a card. All right. Just pick any card in it. They're all stuck together. I know they're very new. Like. And I'm asking you, God, share one thing I've done this week that has made your week better. Oh, well, of course I can say that. Um, really? Well, when I came home, what day was that? Oh. Yeah, I came home and I, I was at work and I knew, mm-hmm. listen, we're creatives, okay? So the house be wrecked. It is what it is. I was at work and I was thinking about, okay, I got to deep, I got to get in the kitchen i gotta do this and this and this and i came home and you guys had cleaned up the living room in the kitchen and it was all nice and it just brought my energy and my chi up yeah and i so i really appreciated that did you really just clean your nail with my car i told you to get away from me i that just brought my chi down (laughs) (laughs) moving right along so yes i returned the question Share one time this week I have done something to make your week better. We played a VR game and we had so much fun playing it. It was a shooting game and 
it just it gave me so much joy to like be in that space energetically with like my wife you know what i mean instead of just like oh we just playing with the fellas it's a whole different thing i felt i felt like i got nourishment you know and i felt like it was really really like enhancing my life at that moment okay and it's something simple as playing a game with my wife but that meant the world to me so that felt really good and i was so happy and dumb dumb answers a lot of and that cake let me say something i hear you so, i hear you yep well 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 let's move this right along because we are a little bit over an hour and we don't like it to be this long so <laughs> it's about that time again we are going to be drawing for next week's topic so can we get a drum roll please Shake, 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 shake. Shake your boot. Ooh, you already ooh. dropped one. Maybe that was it. I'm sorry. I put it back in. I know that's supposed to be. Is that the? Let's I try think. this again. Oh. Pickle. You can't recreate. <laughs> the one on the book. <laughs> the one that fell out on the book. And read aloud, please. <laughs> oh, whoops. Did you really rip it in half? Just hand it to me. See, sorry, this, I got these muscles. This is. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that so funny? Like I don't have muscles or something. No, no, it was just. Listen, I think I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Can you read it, George? I, I am. I am. Highs versus lows. Are they worth it? And after you leave kindergarten, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what? The way you said it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little too hyped today on today's no, podcast. I, 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 Highs versus lows, are they worth it? And we will clarify what all that means, obviously, next week. Any final thoughts for this podcast, Mr. Kemp? Um, um, <laughs> honestly, no, I, I feel like we covered everything, every, everything. Um, I think we, we good. I mean, I, I don't have any other thing except just to really dive more into once again the book because like i said it just is a loophole mm -hmm. when you say okay if this is what we do do what if it's something we don't do right then what yeah is there an answer to those questions mm -hmm. or is that something you have to find yourself right so i get that i mean that's just me being in so many different perspectives at once so i agree yeah <laughs> I think with every podcast, because I'm the one that does like the logistics of like the podcast and how it flows and she things like that. She's trying to say that. she do everything. She I, do, does. I do all the behind the scenes <laughs> stuff. She does. You do all the technical stuff. So like I've been, part of me has been like, hmm, I really want to talk. I feel like we talk so much about the book mm -hmm. and that kind of like, we have to like rush through it sometimes. I'm like, I don't know. Should we just talk about the book or I don't know. I work the, I'm working things out logistically. Because I sometimes feel like we need more time to talk about the book. But I don't know. Let's open it up. We'll see how it goes. If, if, if you feel, people, that, you know, you want us to look more into the book, articles, whatever you like, add things into the comments. Yeah. Tell us whatever you feel. <laughs> we are not sensitive. We we get it. Some of just us let us are know. not sensitive. Just, just, just let us have it. Well, okay. Yeah. Now we're full of it. Okay. So let's go ahead and wrap this sucker up. That is going to do it for this week's podcast. All of the articles used to drive this discussion forward can be found in the description box, as well as the link to the book of the month, the 8080 marriage. Thank you so much for tuning into today's podcast. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and of course, ignore, ignore your energies. energies. That was Should've pretty. Should have done a harmony. Should have done a harmony. That was pretty.